It's summer 1919. There's no chance of hailing a cab here deep in the Leicestershire countryside. For most folk, if you want to get anywhere, you walk or ride a bike. 21-year-old Bella Wright, a factory girl from Stoughton Village, is doing just that. She came from a labouring family, a hard-working family. She herself worked very hard in the mill, producing pneumatic tyres, hot, dusty work. And cycling was really her hobby. She liked to get out into the countryside when she had an opportunity. And on that particular day, she was cycling over to Galby. I believe to see her cousin's child for the first time. Riding in the same area is former army officer Ronald Light. He came from a very well-respected Leicestershire family. He'd been to public school, and really no effort had been spared in, in his upbringing. The image that he gave really was that he was an officer and a gentleman. Bella had been having problems with her bike. One of the wheels appeared to be loose. Hello. Have you got a problem? I think there's something wrong with my bike. Have you got a spanner? Sorry I don't carry spanners with me. As neither of them Mr. could repair it, and it seemed serviceable enough, Bella continued her journey, joined now by Ronald Light. A short time later, they arrived at the cottage in Galby where Bella's uncle, George Measures, lived. I'll be about ten minutes. In fact, Bella was inside the cottage for more than an hour and her relatives noticed a man hanging about outside, apparently waiting for her. They said to her, do you know him? And she said, no, but if she waited long enough, she hoped he might go away. He didn't. See you then. When Bella finally left the cottage, Ronald Light was still there. Her family watched the couple walk their bikes out of the village. It was the last time they saw Bella alive. An hour or so later, Joseph Cowell, a local farmer, was driving some cattle along the Gartry Road, a couple of miles from Galby, when he came across the body of a young woman. It was Bella. At first, it was thought she'd been killed in a freak accident, falling off a bike. A doctor called to the scene declared she'd died from natural causes. But the real reason came to light thanks to the local bobby, Alfred Hall. PC Hall intuitively believed Bella's death hadn't been an accident. He examined her corpse himself and found what everyone else had missed because of the blood, a bullet wound just below her left eye. Alfred Hall returned here to the very spot that Bella's body had lain. And nearby, he found a .455 bullet, probably fired from a gun like this, which was commonly issued to officers in the Great War. And here in this field, he found a dead crow, a bird which was to play a bizarre part in this case later. It was now accepted Bella had been murdered. For some reason, she'd fallen from her bike, and as she lay, terrified and bleeding by the roadside, she was shot at close range in the head. For months, the police search for her killer dragged on with no success. They knew they were after a man on a green bicycle who'd been seen with her, but he'd disappeared without trace. Then, a stroke of luck. A barge dredging on the Leicester Canal recovered a green bike Attempts had been made to file off its serial number, but police were still able to trace its owner, Ronald Light. Light, now a maths teacher at Cheltenham College, was brought here to Leicester Police Station. At first, he denied ever seeing Bella, but after being identified by several witnesses, he said that he had met her, but that he hadn't killed her. The police charged him with murder. On the 9th of July, 1920, with crowds gathered outside court trying to catch a glimpse of him, Ronald Light appeared in the dock. The evidence against him appeared overwhelming, but he'd had a stroke of fortune. Well, Ronald Light was fortunate to secure the services of Surgeon Marshall Hall. He came to Leicester with his reputation before him. He had a string of successes behind him. And he really probably was the best man at the time for that case, which he would have known to have been a hopeless case. But he would have accepted it because he felt it to be a challenge, and that he enjoyed. Light said he'd cycled with Bella for a while after they'd left Galby, but they'd parted at a crossroads because they lived in different directions. He didn't see her again or hear any shots. He admitted he'd tried to file off the serial number on his green bike and had then thrown it and a holster and revolver cartridges into the canal. He did that because he was frightened, 
he knew he was the prime murder suspect. Despite all the damning evidence, his barrister, Sir Edward Marshall Hall, brilliantly succeeded in putting doubts in the mind of the jurors. He even suggested the girl may have been killed accidentally by an unknown gunman out shooting crows with a bullet ricocheting into Bella. The evidence for that, the dead bird found near the murder scene by PC Hall. Sir Edward Marshall Hall said his client hadn't come forward to help the police because he was still suffering from shell shock caused during his war service. After a three-day trial, the jury found him not guilty. Ronald Light was a free man. The